Hi, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. Today we're going to do pillowcases. I'm going to show you three different ways to do your bands and three different ways to close them up. Stick around. Alright, today we're going to make a pillowcase. It's great for any occasion, especially with Christmas coming up. But I decided to use a really pretty uh, bright spring floral print because it's what was talking to me today. But we're going to do um, with, the, with the, the band and then a little bit of an accent color. You can choose to skip that step if you want to, but I'll give you all the instructions and what you need to make this. So stick around. All right, to make this pillowcase, you're going to need three colors of fabric. Um, I have already cut this one, but this is going to be my trim. This is an optional piece but you'll need a yard, minimum of 27 inches anyway, of fabric, that will be the body of your pillow, and then you'll need nine inches of fabric, that will be your band. And in general, this gives you an idea of how it's gonna look when it's all laid out. So you barely see the green. Let's come a little closer. You barely see the green, and it's an optional thing you can do. I just like to tie in more colors to the, um, I th and I think it's fun, and, but it's again, it's an option. Okay, so first thing, as we talked about, this is already cut, but this is a one and a half inch strip. So you wanna do the width of the fabric on all of these. And, and then on the cuff, you're gonna need nine inches. So we're gonna open that up so we don't have double. And let's just go ahead and get that one cut. Now this is how I got it. This has not been used yet, so it has a pretty rough edge from how it was cut. So we're just gonna be generous on how this is trimmed off. Make sure everything is straight. There we go. Okay, so nine inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we've got the band which will be doubled. And then we have the trim, which will also be doubled, but I'm not gonna do that with that piece because it won't like it. And this one, we need 27 inches. And we're gonna have some leftover because this is a yard. So my net, starting up at the zero. Make sure everything is straight. The edge is straight to 27. Clear down here. Okay, so this is extra. All right, so now I have taken all the fabric um, over and pressed it and what I did was this one and a half inch strip is I folded it in half and you are gonna really like that that is done later because it's a small piece okay so we're gonna put that to the side and then we have our nine inch piece um, it will look like this in a minute and then here's the main body of the pillowcase so we are going to uh, do the burrito method and again everything is a width of fabric so um, just make your 27 inch cut your 9 inch cut and your one and a half inch cut on your little one if you even add that one and off we go so the first thing you're going to do is lay your fabric down right side up open it up and lay it out you're going to want to have your pins close by and first thing we're going to do is put the little piece, the one that's already been ironed um, in half, raw edges together 
against the top line right there. And obviously I can't get to the other end right now, I'm not too worried about it, so we're, we're going to work our way across, but you're going to start out with the very edge. And just for a minute I'm going to pin that. We're going to be doing a lot of pinning in a minute. Okay. You take this piece, you open it up, and you're going to have this open just like this, face down. <laughs> on top of that in the same place and actually I don't think I want pins I think I want clips all right so what I'm doing it's a little bit out of camera view I apologize so everything is just lined up here against the edge and it doesn't matter if the salvage is there or not because we're gonna actually trim it in but this is the easiest thing to do so now that we've got this here and like that so we have four layers of fabric right now okay so there's the um, body of the pillow the um, trim and the <laughs> I am having a moment cuff there we go and we're just gonna go down the whole pillow or soon-to-be pillowcase and pin it or clip it whatever works best for you. I like the clips of this project Good. and we're also going to be repositioning everything so get them as straight as you can the edges because you're still you're going to sew across this and get everything enclosed but just to make sure it's good to have them even just in case for some reason your lines are not exact or your sewing lines I'm not going to have anything out of the seam. And we're not done before we can sew anyway, but this is the first part. So again, just hit, find it. because they're coming off of different bolts of fabric, different lines, sometimes you're going to have your edges over on this side like off quite a bit. Don't worry about it. Again, we're going to trim things down, but just work with what you have. So really, I just had a little bit of a difference. Alrighty, so turn it over. Okay, so now we have it wrong side up, and we're going to start rolling this into a tube. And let's see, <laughs> little space. And it doesn't have to be pretty because this is just a temporary thing until you get everything sewn in because we're going to encase this. Really what we're doing is we're getting a what's called a French seam. So this seam right here that is holding the band and the cuff to the pillow is going to be completely enclosed by being on the inside and you won't see it at all. So we're going to roll this up as much as we can there we go. And now we're going to enclose that by taking this other side, folding it up, and then clipping it in to the other pieces that are already up there. So again, start over here at your end. And really what matters on this is that the front and the back of the cuff fabric line up. Otherwise you might get a little uh, skewed. One thing you want to make sure is that this roll is far enough back that it will not accidentally get caught in the seam. You also want to make sure you pick up all, all the four layers. 
unlike what just happened there. And we are nice and straight. Get all that down in there. These are super easy. You can whip out a bunch of these for the kids, the grandkids, your kids, neighbors, um, girlfriends. Just trying to make sure this is all on the straight side. Now, one thing I have found is because this fabric can shift and you'll notice it when you roll it. This is my center seam and even though I pressed it, I left it in there. And you can take that and kind of eyeball it and make sure that that really is lining up in the center as well as on the edges, and it is. And you can see we've got a little bit of slack here that we're gonna take up, but we wanna keep the ends um, the same. Okay. Now, I'm going to go take this to my sewing machine. I don't have my camera set up for that today, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my regular foot, not my quarter inch foot, but my three or yeah, my three eighths inch foot, and stitch down the side, and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, we are back. So I have now done my seam down here, and it's a five eighths of an inch foot, not three eighths. I, I do apologize. It's your normal foot from your sewing machine. Uh, you can use a quarter inch foot if you really like. I personally like the little thicker th seam on here because you have so much fabric that's going in there and it's going to get a little more abuse than what a quilt would as far as on that particular seam. And I just want to make sure I've got everything in there really good. Plus I like to do a top stitch and having that longer will get caught in the top stitch and help it to lay flat. So that's why I do what I do. But now we have the whole thing encased. So we're going to reach in here and pull out the fabric. And this is the magic of this pillowcase. Okay, so now that it's open, you can see my little band, see the fabric, and here's the back side. It's completely enclosed, and that's because we did what's called a French seam, and there's all that. Now we're not done. Um, I personally prefer to do a top stitch right above the seam line here, and that will keep all the fabrics together give an extra little stitch for keeping things in place and I just think it looks really nice. So this is a time when you can use your decorative stitches on your machine or just do a straight stitch. Today I'm going to just do a straight stitch. Before I do that I think I'm going to take it to the iron and press it just to make sure everything's really good and tight and then I'm going to come back after I've done my seam. All right, we are done with that. So this is what it looks like. What I did is I put my quarter inch foot back on the machine and I did use a white thread or a kind of a cream thread so it might show up here, it might not. But by doing that, I, I did a 5 eighths of an inch seam to start out with and then switched to a quarter inch uh, foot to do my top stitching and then as I came through I used the very edge of the foot right along this fold right here and as I had sewn it, this is the back, it caught the um, fabric that was inside. So it just reinforces it and it makes it so it lays the direction that I want. I personally like it going down. Okay, so there is that. Next thing we're going to do is fold it in half, um, right sides together, and then we're going to sew down the side here with a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch. Um, you can use your serger if you have one. I'm going to show you what you can do with your sewing machine. 
first thing I'm going to do though is match everything up. You're going to match up the, the top of the binding here and the top of these and sometimes there's a little bit of a wiggle. Um, you just want to make the, it look as good as you can but the most important honestly is the very top of the fabric, the, the band. So what we want to do is we want this to be about 20 inches Oh yeah, we're good. We've got lots of room. So what I think I'm going to do, because this has some extra room, is make this a French seam pillowcase all the way around, not just in the cuff. So this piece of fabric is pretty good size. It Normally you would cut it down to about 20 inches from the seam to the salvage, uh, making your cut line, you know, somewhere along here. And it might be a good idea, you can cut it now or you can get a marking tool and mark it down, uh, that, that mark to, to make a sew, sew line. But I'm going to do a French seam and you'll see what that is. And so I'm going to actually sew over here close to the edge. And I do have salvages and I honestly don't want the salvages so I am going to trim those off. I don't know if you know this about salvages, but they are a little tighter weave and they tend to shrink a little differently. So it's possible, not always, but it's possible that the uh, edge of the fabric or the salvages might get a little tighter or, or pucker. And that's why I always cut it off and why I'm going to do that. So here I'm just going to go in about, I don't know, it kind of looks like a half an inch just to catch that salvage edge and I'm cutting on both sides and it doesn't matter if, if some of the print is still showing up because um, the technique that we're going to use it doesn't even have to be straight it's easier but And we're good on the bottom because that was a cut edge. All right, so what we're going to do is pin this in place. And you can use your binder clips or regular pins. This really doesn't matter at this point because it's not too thick. Uh, regular pins could work. Main thing is you want your band to be as matched up as possible. In fact, I, for security, am going to put a clip right here to make sure it doesn't wiggle because it's a lot of fabric and it might wiggle. Okay, so we're going to do another couple of pins. And so the plan of attack is we're going to start up at the top, we're going to back stitch. You're going to come in and use your 5 eighths of an inch foot again. Come down here, so all the way down the side, going all the way down to the corner, and then changing directions and coming over to this corner. Oops, we're not in the viewfinder yet. Into this corner. And then I want to, me personally, because this is a lot of tugging on a, on a pillow, you can tighten your stitch, you can use a heavy weight thab, <laughs> heavier weight thread, or uh, you could go over it a couple of times. I may go over this again, but there's also, um, I want to do a zigzag stitch if this were to stay exposed. Um, I am choosing to do a French seam on this, so I don't need to do that. But if I did leave it exposed, I would zip down, maybe go another time, but then come back and do a zigzag stitch along the edge unless you had a serger and you can do all that in one big swoop. But then, so I can take this to the machine and, and do that and then after I'll show you what a French seam is because that's the next step. Alright, so I'm done with that and I have changed my mind. I don't want to do a French seam on this. <laughs> I'll show you what that is though. Um, I'm going to go through and um, do the last step on here and then flip it around. So what I've done is I've put my um, 5 8 inch foot back on because you want a nice little um, edge there 
and I started at the top, went down to the corner, was zipped across the bottom, and now I'm gone back up again. And I was really sh careful to make sure that my stitch actually went over the top and back stitch stitched. You don't want to have an end right there because that's like the worst part of the whole pillowcase for tension and where they start to come fall apart. So now I'm going to go back and do a zigzag stitch around there and then um, clip the corners. Actually, I'm going to do that right now because you're going to have a problem with the point. So we're just going to reduce that. Okay, and I'll be right back. All right, so we are done. I have started up at the top with a straight stitch. I put my 5 8 foot back on, and I started at the top and worked all the way down to the corner and then went across and came back, back stitching on top of it just to reinforce it. And then I went down here to the bottom and I cut across on an angle the corner and then I went back and I did that on both corners and did a zigzag stitch. And so that's what you're seeing right here is the zigzag stitch plus the double stitching that I did to reinforce that. Now I was talking about doing a French seam and all that, but I'm not going to do that with this pillowcase. Two reasons. <laughs> One, I changed my mind. And the other is uh, you do the exactly opposite to do a French seam. You're going to actually put your raw edges together and then do this step. And then when you turn the pillowcase inside out, um, or right side out, there we go. You're going to stitch on top of that, enclosing that seam right here, and then flip the pillowcase back. And I'll show you on a little bit different thing. But anyway, this pillowcase, I just started on the wrong side, but I like this just the way it is. So I'm going to call this good, and then I'll show you a better example of the French seam. So typically, a pillowcase is about 20 inches wide. This is a little roomier, not by much, but. Um, it's all good. It's really good. This is such pretty fabric and I was impressed that I could find these colors in my stash because I'll be honest, I'm not sure what the colors are. I want to call this kind of a... <sighs> See, I'm, a, I'm at a lost melon, maybe. And this is like a aqua. Anyway, I, I think this looks really pretty of unique colors but it ties it all together so if you were into machine embroidering or even hand embroidery before you put your band on you can put something on here um, so that the raw edges of that or the back side of that embroidery is encased and you don't see it but this is what a French seam looks like is it's completely encased like that so this is the done finished project of this one I want to show you another one that I have done. This is a very loved pillow. <laughs> Instead of using the one and a half inch fabric for my trim, I actually used ribbon. And it's just a hint of ribbon. And if you can't tell by the fabric on here, it's pretty much a purple pillowcase, but it has some peach running through it. And so I didn't want a really bright or thick um, accent, but I did want to have a little bit of an accent and I happen to have the right color of ribbon and I I just liked how I did that I haven't done that on many and like I said this is a well used and it's wearing very well there's the inside this one was done with the serger and so that's that's the serger side so there's this now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do this uh, the actual right way for the French seam. I'm not going to do the whole pillowcase. I'm just going to show you the process. Alright, so I've taken the leftover piece of fabric that I had, which wasn't very much, <laughs> and I put the same size band on here. I'm going to show you what this French seam looks like. Also, what it looks like when you don't have the little trim and you use a decorative stitch. So this is just one of the many that I could pick from and you don't even have to but this just gives you a variation but notice what I did is I put my Ross my um, <laughs> wrong sides together and um, stitched the top stitch going down to the corner and across and over here and I double back because I like extra security going up to here and making sure the top is covered really well. But I did it on 
what looks to be like the wrong side, right? Because this is the right side of the fabric and it doesn't look right to have the seam there. Well, this is the trick and the beauty of a French seam. So we're gonna now turn it inside out. Oop, I got ahead of myself. First, I want to trim the corners so we don't have as much bulk. So just doing that. All right, now we can do it. And really, you do want to get this as close to pointy as you can. There we go. It's a pretty point. Okay, so now it's inside out. Okay, and now what we're going to do is feel for where that seam is that I just did. And we're going to make sure we go in from that. So you could put your smaller foot on to then do a bigger one just to go over it or to, to know that you're going to skip it. But however you want to do it, whether you mark it or you feel it as you go or you use a, a wider seam allowance and with a better with a different foot, just make sure you know that as you're stitching down here, this part right here is enclosed in your seam. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So now I have flipped it inside out, so you have the wrong side of the outside, and I enclosed my seam, gave myself a buffer, probably more than I needed, but it's okay. So there's my seam in there, and I have done a stitch all the way around, coming down to here, and I did my double stitch again. Again, that's just a, a thing I like to do. It's an option for you. It doesn't have to be. But now at this time you're going to pull it turned inside out or right side out and you're done. So the reason it's called a French seam is because there are no raw edges exposed. This is our little pillowcase and this is the inside of it. You can't see what's going on in there. So a thinner one might look better for proportion wise for this little pillow pillow cover, but there we have that one with a French seam, and then we have this one with a traditional um, seam using a zigzag stitch and a band and a um, straight stitch versus a decorative stitch, and then the other option that I've shown you is a one that I had that I used ribbon on. So just as well as a serger. So you have different ways to finish these. In the end, it's a pillowcase. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy. I hope you try it. Hope the uh, grandkids love their Christmas presents. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right. So here's an overview of what we just did. I just uh, did the French seam, making a sample pillowcase but I used a decorative top stitch. I did not use a, a coordinating trim like what you can see up here. I did the French seam though, so the seam is completely enclosed on the inside all the way down. There's no exposed seam and you don't have to finish off the edges. The other one we did was uh, this one I did a straight stitch across the band and did use a little trim color and then I did a straight stitch, just reinforcing it, and then giving it a zigzag stitch for the inside. And then the last one is one I had made before, but I had put ribbon on here instead of trim. So there we have ribbon instead of trim. And that's because I liked, I wanted just a hint of color and I wanted to see how well it did, and this is a couple years old, it's been washed a lot, and it's, it looks really cool. So that's it. But this one, I did do a serger on the inside. So it still has the French seam, they're all enclosed bands, but this one was, was uh, sewn together using a serger. This one was just a straight stitch with a zigzag. This one is the French seam. So you have three different ways of doing your bands three different ways of doing the final stitches and I hope you find one you like 
and share what you think about it. Thanks. Bye. Here we are with our finished pillowcases. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe, comment and share. Thanks so much. And here's our finished product.